also, and it's kind of the same question but phrased differently, he's kind of asking the, the, you the question, you know, what is it that you're living for? What is it that you're devoted to? Where, where do you put your, your treasure? Okay, and the way to work out where you are putting your treasure is, because it might not be immediately obvious to you as you're thinking, well, where is it that I am actually putting my treasure in this moment? It might not be obvious, but the way to work out where it is is to ask yourself, well, what is it that I'm worried about? Because it is what you are worried about that will reveal where your heart is. What are the things that keep you up at night when you're tossing and, and turning and trying to get to sleep, trying to find the cold side of the pillow? What is it that, that keeps you awake at night? What is the stuff that, that you worry about? And, and if you're making notes this morning, you might even just want to write that down right now and say, you know, this is the thing, or these are the couple of things that I'm worried about in my life. Just make a note of it. And I, I don't know what it might be. It might be exams. It might be relationships and friendships. It might be the future or, or climate change. Or it might be the stuff that you just never, ever want to talk about. Like, like it maybe it is your kind of relationship status. Maybe it's your, your family relationships. Maybe it's someone in your family that's got an illness and you're worried they might die. Maybe it's that you worry that nobody actually likes you, they just pretend that they like you, uh, and, and it just kind of eats away at you. Maybe it is the fact that you worry that nobody will ever remember you when you're gone and you're, 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 you'll never make a difference in the world. Whatever it is that, that worries you, keeps you up at night, write it down. And, and Jesus says that if, if you're worrying about stuff like that, even the stuff that's right at the very core of who you are. Uh, do you know what I mean? That stuff right inside of you that kind of consumes all the time. Jesus says that when you're worrying about that stuff, it's a sign that that is where you are seeking your treasure and that's what you're putting first. And, and if, you're, if you're putting something else above Jesus in, in the place of worship, <coughs> and, and, and often you find when you unpick it, whatever it is, it's like I was saying last night, we often want to worship ourselves when you start to unpick it, you know, the, the kind of worship of your future career is just really a worship of yourself. But Jesus says it just doesn't work. You can only make one thing, uh, number one in your life, it's either God or mammon. And if you make if you make the stuff of the world the thing that you, you, you worship and, and your purpose in your life, you will worry about it. And the fact that you're worried about it is a sign that you're putting it first. That you're making, you know, your career, your influence, your finances, whatever, the purpose of your life. Uh, and, and this convicts me to the core as well, because like, I'm just a human being, like the rest of you, and, and I worry about stuff all the time as well, like how are we going to pay the bills, and, and what about tomorrow, and, and, and how are we going to fix this kind of situation, uh, but, but here's the thing, the way this works is the reason why you worry about stuff of the world like that is because you might lose it because you were the one that earned it in the first place, okay? So, so think about it like this. Imagine you are a brilliant musician, okay, which some of you are. Uh, you are a brilliant musician and, and you practice, you rehearse, you go to all the music lessons as a child, your parents buy you all the instruments, and for hours and hours and hours, slowly you become a better person. But here's the thing, because you earned it, you worry about it. Because what if I lost it all? What if I became ill and could no longer play anymore? What if I made some stupid decisions and, and threw it all away? And so do you see, you then start to become a little bit anxious about it. And every time you go to do a performance, you start to get worried about it. And it kind of starts to get to you. And, and eventually that kind of anxiety can start to consume you. And, and you're not even sure you can carry on as a musician anymore because it just gets to you so much. Do you see, that's what happens when you put something that is not Jesus at the center of your, your treasure. If that's where you put your heart and your purpose and your meaning in your life. Life. It's like it's like Jesus says. It's like laying up your treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. It's like there's all this stuff that's really important in your life, all of these issues, and you can't keep a handle on it all. And they're all going in different directions, and it seems like one thing gets fixed, and then there's another problem over here. And like you know, the moths are eating it over there, and, and rust is destroying it over there, and then all the thieves break in and take everything. And you're like, for goodness' sake, start all over again. Uh, you know, sometimes I think when you're a student, it feels like you're you're trying to cross the road and you look both ways and you check about six times, you, you, you listen and then you step into the road and immediately get hit by three buses and a lorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's kind of what it, it feels like. You're, you're trying to hold on to all this different stuff and it all seems to be going everywhere and, and you can't get any rest or, or any sleep because your, your treasure is just dispersed. Well, Jesus says your problem is you cannot serve two masters only one, you can't devote yourself to two things, only one, and instead of putting your hand on all this different man-made treasure and stuff all over the place, put your hand on one thing, make your purpose in your life one thing, Jesus. Because you 
say the thing with Jesus is that you cannot lose him because you never earned him in the first place. Like everything else in life, that you make your purpose and your treasure where you put your heart, the trouble is because you earned it in the first place, you may well lose it. But with Jesus, you never earn him in the first place. You cannot lose him. He is secure. And the, and the trouble is for lots of you, it's like Jesus is probably there within your life but, but instead of him being your only purpose and your only devotion, he is in actual fact the thing that you think is going to help you find your own purpose. Okay, so Jesus isn't your own, your only purpose, but he's the thing that's going to help you find your own self-determined purpose. And so you think, you know, I'm worried about my image and I want to be a likable person. I want to be successful. I want to be impressive. For some of you, even, you know, you're on the CU committee and you're like, oh, I want to be an impressive spiritual leader or, or maybe it is I want to be a brilliant musician or a brilliant sports person whatever it is for you that you're kind of dreaming about and wanting to do you think well Jesus will help me do it won't he Jesus will help me do it and but the trouble is that's your own self-determined purpose that's actually what we were talking about last night that's self-worship but you think you know if I read the Bible if I go to church if I do all of this stuff for Jesus then he's going to help me to find my own purpose in life like how many of you think that when you wake up in the morning and you read the Bible, that it's going to give you a brilliant day? <coughs> you, 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 know, you kind of imagine, you know, if I, especially if I get up early, get up at 6 a.m., read the Bible for an hour, okay, and really engage with it so much that you're weeping, you think, you know, then, then all of a sudden, God the Father is going to be there and he's going to be like, quick, get Jesus, get the Holy Spirit, get in the heavenly boardroom with a heavenly flip chart paper because Jamie has read the Bible this morning. We're going to need blessings, we're going to need sunshine, we're going to need the birds singing. This has got to be like the best day ever because he's read the Bible, guys. And he sends all the angels out and, you know, I walk to work and the birds are even carrying my bags like that scene in Snow White. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, do you know what I mean? That's kind of how we imagine that, that, that you know, when we do stuff for God, he will bless us in, uh, in our own purposes for life. And I've got news for you. It doesn't work like that. Not only because you, you live in Manchester. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's trying to persuade God to, to follow your own purposes in life, which is actually the very opposite of saying your kingdom come will be done. It's saying, my kingdom come, my kingdom be done. But, but oh, Jesus, look, I can really do with your help on this one. Uh, and look, I'll do you a deal. If I scratch your back, you scratch mine, I'll read the Bible, you help me out. Well, look, you guys, it doesn't, that's not the way that this works. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot hold on to your dreams and your ambitions and expect that you can bargain Jesus into coming along for the ride. And I... I think I used to think that it would work like that, that I could both have everything that I dreamed of in the world and, and a successful career and, and all this kind of wonderful stuff that I wanted and still be on fire for Jesus. And then I realised, no, 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 I have to let go of all of that. Give it all up. And, and, and if you try bargaining Jesus along for the ride, you will end up as well, not only finding that you, you just can't do both things, but also that's when you'll be tossing and turning all night. That's when you'll be nervously checking your emails, that's when you'll be feeling anxious and you'll be feeling those feelings of worry rising up inside of you because instead of li living for the purpose that cannot fail and cannot end, you'll be living for your own <coughs> fragile, small, pathetic purpose that can, as Jesus says, can easily be snatched away by moths, by thieves and by rust. By moths, for goodness sakes, <laughs> moths of all things. Like, because look guys, do, do you understand how fragile you really are. Do you know how fragile you know? I know what it's like in your early 20s and, and, and your late teens, you kind of feel like you're and invincible. late 20s. What's that? I'm late 20s. I'm late 20s. <laughs> late 20s. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you, feel like, you feel like you're invincible. Uh, you know, so it's, but, but my, my brother in law, um, he, so yeah, my wife's brother, he, he, last January, he had a slight cold and he was at a football match with his mates. He had a slight cold and so. He, he left the pub, went home early, and uh, he, he went to bed early just with a bit of the cold-like symptoms. He woke up the next morning with a rash, and uh, his girlfriend had to drag him out of bed, take him to hospital. By the time he got to hospital, he was in a, a coma with total organ failure, and they said they thought he was going to die within a matter of hours. Uh, it turned out he had meningitis, um, which then meant he also had uh, sepsis. And, and that he was in a coma for six months in hospital. He ended up having his legs emergency amputated and all of his fingers. And like, it happened in an instant. Like one day he was fine and he was at the football
call with his mates the next day he was in a coma. And I was like, wow, how, like, how does that happen? Like, you, you were so fragile. That could be you tomorrow. And you see, if you start to live life for, for your own purpose and you think that you can take Jesus for the ride, how stupid that is. Because all of it could just fall apart and unravel in an instant. Like, if you make... If you make the world the purpose of your life, you have every reason to worry. You should worry, because life is, is really, really fragile, okay? But make Jesus the purpose of your life, and see what he says will happen. 